So experiment five, fractional distillation, we will be going over fractional distillation. Um, fractional distillation is a technique used to separate volatile compounds. Um, and we're able to separate these compounds if their boiling points differ by at least 40 to 50 degrees Celsius. One example of some volatile compounds we can separate using fractional distillation is uh, toluene and benzene. Um, these two comp uh, compounds have boiling points of 111 degrees Celsius and 80 degrees Celsius, which falls into um, the qualifications of having boiling points that differ by at least 40 to 50 degrees Celsius. So with that, um, we can use a temperature composition diagram to assess the composition of the mixture um, at different uh, points in the process. Uh, so the graph itself, um, on the x-axis, we have the mole percent of each compound using our example of toluene and benzene. Uh, toluene runs 0 to 100 percent, and then benzene runs reverse. And it works this way because when there's no toluene, there's 100 percent benzene. And then the y-axis is just for temperature. Um, the two lines you'll see on this diagram are the liquid line and the vapor line, which is calculated using Raoult's law. So um, to read this graph, you first come down and find the mole percent of your mixture for the liquid line. Um, at this point, we have 42% toluene and 58% benzene. And we can just um, determine this from where it falls on the x-axis. And then um, that's at 90 degrees Celsius. So we can come over to the vapor line um, at 90 degrees Celsius as well and see the mole percent um, for each compound at that point. So at this point on the vapor line, we have 22% moles toluene and 78% or mole percent of benzene. Um, and this is helpful to know because um, a key point in fractional distillation is that at any given temperature, the vapor phase um, is richer in the more, more volatile com compound or component than um, it is in the, uh, well, essentially the um, more volatile compound will be more abundant. So in this situation at the vapor line, we can see that benzene is more abundant and therefore it is more volatile than the toluene. Yeah, it has less boiling point, which is 80 degrees Celsius. So in this specific experiment, we're going to use fractional distillation to isolate 2-butanone and 2-pentanone in a mixture we're going to create um, that contains 10 milliliters of butanone and 20 milliliters of pentanone. Uh, the boiling point of butanone is about 80 degrees Celsius, and the boiling point of pentanone is about 101 degrees Celsius. And the difference between these boiling points is at least 40 to 50 degrees Celsius. Um, a few safety tips for this lab is we don't want to pack our um, fraction column too tightly um, just because that could potentially create a closed system which we never heat. And then also before you start it's important that you look at your round bottom flask and um, check for any cracks or like star cracks. Um, and then at, towards the end of the experiment you want to make sure to leave about one to two milliliters of liquid in the round bottom flask just to prevent um, it burning into the glassware. Um, so the apparatus itself um, consists of a lot of pieces. Um, starting from the bottom, we have the heating mantle, which will hold the round bottom flask. Um, in this situation, our round bottom flask is going to contain the um, butanone and the pentanone, as well as some boiling chips, which just that help to um, mix the mixture while it boils. Um, coming up from the round bottom flask, we have the fractioning column or the Hempel column. Um, this column is special because it has uh, glass teeth towards the bottom, um, which you need to be careful in not breaking. Um, inside the fractioning column, we have our glass rings. Um, these help to create more surface area, um, which allow for a better separation. Um, up a little bit more. We've got the thermometer adapter, which will fit into the fractioning column and the thermometer. Um, with the thermometer, it's important that you keep the immersion line aligned with the condenser um, just to get a proper temperature reading. Uh, moving over, we have the condenser, um, which is where the vapor will condense back into a liquid. Um, 
and we have the clamp that's going to hold it in place. Um, in through this uh, side we'll have cold water and it will flow through and hot water will come out at the top uh, back into the sink. Um, coming down from the condenser we have the adapter um, which is open right here um, which is important because again we don't want to ever create a closed system and from the adapter it will come into the receiver. So in this situation or in this lab we will collect three uh, dis uh, fractions. Um, fraction A will be collected from uh, the beginning up until about 80 degrees Celsius. Fraction B will be collected from 80 degrees Celsius to 100 degrees Celsius. Um, and fraction C will be collected uh, 100 degrees Celsius and beyond. And it's important that we record the volumes of our distillates uh, that we collect because we're going to use them to analyze the percent recovery. So in addition to this percent recovery, um, analysis for this lab includes percent composition, um, and we will use this, or we will use um, gas chromatography to help us figure this uh, percent composition out, and you will uh, collect a spectra using gas chromatography for all samples A, B, and C, um, and it will give you a little graph, and we will go over how to do percent composition uh, later in the video, so uh, let's begin the experiment. So these are the glassware of our apparatus. So for the uh, fractional distillation apparatus, um, we've got the uh, condenser, which is the skinnier piece. Um, we've got the hempful column, which is the uh, larger piece. Um, we will be packing this one with uh, dry rings. These are the glass ring. Yeah. And um, does it have teeth also at the bottom? Oh yeah, it has these uh, little teeth at the bottom. You um, can see from this end. And this end as well. Yeah, at least three teeth. We have to be very cautious. Yes. Then we have the round bottom flask, which will sit in our sand bath. And then we have the adapter. And the distilling head um, and we also have our thermometer which will stick out of the top and we also just have some beakers and test tubes to collect our samples. Um, the compounds we'll be using in this lab are 2-butanone and 2-pentanone. Now we will set up the assembly. So the mixture we will be distilling today is um, a mix of 10 milliliters of 2-butanone and 20 milliliters of 2-pentanone. So we can go ahead and add that to our round bottom flask. And then also just pop in about two boiling stones. And then put it in here. And then we'll set up our distillation apparatus and we will uh, pack the Hempel column uh, with the glass beads. So now we're gonna fill the Hempel column. Um, basically, you're gonna fill it to about right under here and you're gonna pour in through the top. And you want to go slow and not put too many um, because if you put too many and it's too tightly packed, you can create a closed system and we all know we do not want that in the lab. Drop one. This is our have yes. pulp column is ready for fractional distillation. Yes. Great. So now we're going to grease our joints and put our apparatus together. Um, I'm going to demonstrate how to grease a joint on this piece, which will be going into the round bottom flask. So 
basically what you do is you take the grease and you just put a little bit on the top and you can just kind of put it around and then we're going to put it in and spread the grease around and you can tell the grease is on there if the um, glossy kind of cloudy nature of the joint uh, turns clear and then we can just rest that in here and we're going to grease all the other joints um, in the same manner clip. yes so um, as well as greasing we want to clip our joints just to make sure that you know in case you take something apart it's not going to fall apart so it's just using the blue clip and putting it on like that so a small portion on the top bigger portion at the bottom yeah and now we are going to connect condenser here so now we have everything connected all of our joints are greased and we put the clamps on so um, there are a few last little touches um, the first thing you're going to want to make sure is that the immersion line on your thermometer which is there's the line on the back aligns with the opening of the condenser because if it's incorrectly placed it can give you improper temperature readings and then the last thing you want to do is connect your water lines. So water in is going to go here down at the bottom of the condenser. So this tube is coming directly from this water line. And it is going in the in, inside inlet. So where is the outlet? And then we have a tube from our bin that we are going to use as the out tube. And that is and going to go, go into through. this little hole okay. down here. Now we can start our um, water. We need to plug it in. And I always kind of like to hold the water in too to make sure that nothing mm -hmm. um, sprays out. Yeah, you have to start the water very gently yeah um, and you can always check to see if the water is running by feeling the tubes we can also double check from here see it's very fast okay and we're going to start off with our heat um, around five or six. I'm going to do that in the middle. So it's around five or six heat. And we are going to watch the temperature um, until it hits about 80 degrees. Um, during this time period, we will be collecting sample A. So this is after 10 minutes. Now you can see solution is boiling and uh, solvent ketones are condensing here in this one. But the temperature is still below 40. and vapors are slowly coming up so we have to wait a little bit more maybe five minutes more so it's been about 20 minutes um, our temperature is now around 82 and we are still doing fraction a and you can see it's um, just starting to um, roll down um, well but um, so our temperature did surpass 80 but that's okay we're just gonna kind of wait until it's dripping at that constant rate. And then after that, we will look for the up three or down three change before we switch receivers. Yeah, we can see the condensed solution Drip. is here. And now you can see it start dripping also. So this is our fraction A coming down. This is fraction A. Once fraction A will complete, then we will start the heating more. 
All right, so now we have had our um, fraction A. We've seen the temperature increase three degrees. We're up at about 86 now. And we're just going to switch to receiver B. Um, I'm just gonna raise it up here. And we're also going to measure how many uh, milliliters we got for fraction A. So we can just test or check that in this graduate cylinder. So we got, it looks about like 2.1 milliliters. So we got 2.1 milliliters. And then we increase the temperature? Yes, we increase the temperature to about seven. And we are now collecting uh, distillate B. And then we will keep B in place until we reach 100 degrees Celsius. So it has been in another additional 25 to 30 minutes, and we um, have collected a pretty large amount of fraction B. Um, our um, apparatus temperature is uh, around 100, and we're gonna go ahead and switch to uh, collect fraction C. And that's just because our round bottom flask is kind of getting pretty low, and we wanna collect fraction C um, from the 100 degree point until we have about one to two milliliters left in the round bottom flask. So we just want to make sure we don't run out of distillate. So um, if we measure this. We need to measure in the yeah. bigger. Yeah. Measuring so it looks to be around 20. So let's just see exactly what it is. Um, so. 18, 19. I'd say about 19 milliliters. So, um, compared to uh, fraction A, which was um, only 2.1 milliliters, you can tell there's a really big difference. 19 ml, and then fraction A was 2.1 ml. This is 19 ml. And so now, and now we are collecting, collecting fraction C here. And that's just until we have about one to two milliliters left in the round bottom flask, which um, will help us prevent from like burning the product into the glassware. Mm. We are almost there. All right. So we have about one to two milliliters left in the round bottom flask. So we're just going to go ahead and stop our distillation. Um, we're going to turn off the heat. I'm going to continue to let the water run just for a little bit to um, help with some of that heat that might still be over here. Um, it also might drip a little bit still, so I'm just going to put this under here for safety measures. So we're going to collect or measure our fraction C. Um, and it appears to be about um, two point, what is that, like one as well as the other one was? It's uh, 2.1. Yeah. Actually, it's 2. Point it's hard to tell. 2.4 ml. Oh. Mm -hmm. 2.4 ml. Um, so, uh, 2.4 milliliters. So this is fraction C, 2.4 ml. We switched off the heating. Yes. Now let it cool down, then we will dismantle. Okay, now you can see your experiment is complete. So, uh, we just pull it up so that it will become cold. And then remove your glass, round one of glass first and then 
gently remove your sample column dismantle this one and make sure it should be tight we will remove this and also you need to close this water and then we will throw this uh, glass bead into the wet uh, beaker so here we have a, a dry ring pot and this is the wet ring so you have to collect all this here so just tap it and it will come all the come now your hempel column is clean okay so now that we're done with our experiment it's time to clean our glassware so the first step is that we're going to remove all of the grease using hexane next we're going to use soap and water to clean and lastly, we're gonna use acetone to dry all of our glassware. So, as you can see, this glassware here still has a lot of grease. You can see that because it is clear, it is not white. This one at the top also still has a lot of grease, so we're gonna remove that first. Next, we're gonna use soap and water to clean the inside, and then we're gonna use acetone to clean these portions right here. So now I'm gonna get my hexane and I'm gonna place it on this paper towel. I'm gonna to do it up here because the hexane dries very fast. I'm going to wipe off the grease until I get a white looking color. Maybe a little more. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna do the same to the top. I'm gonna to wipe the grease off from the inside to get a white looking color. May have to add some more hexane because it does dry very fast. To get inside of the glassware, this is really giving me some trouble. There we go. There we go. Great. So this is the way we have to clean all the glasswares. Remove the grease mm -hmm. for everyone. Okay, so now that we've removed all of our grease, we're gonna now clean it with soap and water. We're gonna use our DI water, add some water, I'm gonna add some soap. And now I'm going to get a brush and I'm going to clean the inside of the glassware. Ensuring that it is fully clean, adding water, rinsing it, possibly doing it another time if it's not all the way clean. Now that I've cleaned it, I'm gonna use acetone to dry this glassware. So now that we're done collecting all of our products, we're gonna take the fraction A, B, and C, and we're going to dump it in our waste. Here we have our organic waste. The stock one will usually tell you what goes in the organic waste. I'm going to take it, put in our organic waste, and then I'm going to close the top. The last portion of the cleaning is drying the glassware. So I'm going to come to the front and get my acetone. And I'm going to do this over the waste. And I'm going to add the acetone thoroughly through to dry. I'm also going to add it in here for the condenser going to insert just a little bit, shake it, and then cut it out. You can also sit it on a paper towel to ensure that all of the acetone comes out and it dries properly. So we need to clean all, dry all the glasswares using acetone? Yes. Okay. So now we have all the cleaning done. Great.